chilling scenes today above the Ukrainian capital of Kyiv as Putin continues his relentless assault. Video is circulating showing kamikaze drones striking targets across the city with the Ukrainian military desperately trying to shoot them out of the sky. Deadly prison fire. The other major headline oversees a fatal fire at one of Iran's most notorious prisons where hundreds of anti-government protesters are being held as violent protests against the government continue. A person of interest is now in custody as police in Stockton, California investigate a possible serial killer. At least six murders that could be tied to the suspect. And authorities say he was out hunting his next victim when they moved in. Tough on crime. It's a top issue heading into the midterms with conservative outcry over defunding the police, a message some voters are responding to. Part of the reason why the defund the police narrative has stayed around is because police officers say it and elected officials say it and people believe and trust them. But an ABC News review of more than 100 police agencies suggests the rhetoric on police funding may not match the reality. ABC's Pierre Thomas reports. Prime Playlist. We sit down with Grammy-winning musician Robert Glasper at the famed Blue Note Jazz Club, where he talks about finding inspiration and crossing genres. Black music is so colorful, and, and I, I've been blessed with a gift that I can represent a few of those colors. Collaborating with some of music's biggest names on hits like Afro Blue. Rich as the night. And they're among the world's most adored superstars. That won't keep members of BTS out of their mandatory military service. So what's a K-pop fan to do? Good evening, everyone. I'm Lindsay Davis. Thanks so much for streaming with us. Kamikaze drones attacking a country's capital city. The images look and sound very much like scenes out of a movie, but that is the reality in Ukraine tonight as Russia's new reign of terror ramps up on targets far from the battlefield. The now recognizable sound of buzzing, which is the first sign of a drone strike, alerted soldiers, allowing them to detect this particular one and bring it down. But several other drones made it through defenses today in Kyiv and beyond, killing at least four four civilians and injuring several more people, sending residents running in fear. Inside one apartment that was hit, emergency workers found the bodies of a man and his pregnant wife. Ukrainian and Western officials say the Iranian purchased drones are to fill the gaps as Russia is beginning to run out of long-range missiles. Iran has denied supplying the drones, but the U.S. says there is overwhelming evidence. Tonight, President Zelensky is calling on allies to, put, to supply Ukraine with more sophisticated defense systems to help. Britt Klenet leads us off tonight from Kyiv. Tonight, Russia's deadly campaign of terror. Kamikaze drones raining down on Kyiv. The capital coming under attack during the morning rush for the second time in a week. Ukraine claiming Russia launched at least 43 Iranian-made drones packed with explosives across the country, saying it shot down all but six. These videos of the strikes circulating online. Watch as police officers with assault rifles desperately try to shoot a drone out of the sky. You can hear the terrifying buzz of the drone in this body camera video, then the massive explosion. Chaos on the streets, reporters and police seeking cover. <laughs> Sheltering together, this woman asking for water. Residents running for their lives as explosions and gunfire are heard nearby. Firefighters combing through the aftermath, searching for survivors. Tragically, at least four people killed, including a pregnant woman and her husband. There's a strong sense of urgency here as emergency workers are frantically searching through the debris of that building. Smell is acrid of fire smoke, and you can see it rising out of that apartment building, which has been obliterated in this attack. President Zelensky tonight reiterating his plea for more sophisticated air defense systems, saying Russia has no chance on the battlefield, so it's trying to cover up its military defeats with terror. A sentiment echoed by the Pentagon. It says Moscow is deliberately striking civilian infrastructure and non-military targets. Iran denies supplying Russia with drones, but the US saying the proof is extensive and violates a UN resolution. 
Russia deepening an alliance with Iran uh, is something the whole world uh, should, especially those in the region uh, and across the world, frankly, should be seen as a f profound threat. And in Russia, near the Ukraine border tonight, a military fighter jet crashing into a residential area during a training exercise, sparking a massive fire that engulfed an apartment building. Experts say these two white flashes seen in video circulating online show the pilot ejecting from the plane. A bystander seen talking to the pilot moments later. The death toll rising, at least six people killed, several more missing. Russian authorities blaming engine failure for the crash. Britt joins us now from Kyiv. Britt, if these attacks do continue, is the U.S. prepared to respond to President Zelensky's plea for better defense systems? Well, look, U.S. officials believe Russia's military is actually running low on precision-guided weapons, which is why, Lindsay, they're turning to Iran for help. And a senior defense official saying the U.S. is trying to get more of those defense systems to Ukraine within the next several weeks, defense systems that Ukraine says they desperately need, as today's terror here in Kyiv proves. And it's another escalation in Putin's war campaign. Lindsay? All right. Britt Clinton for us. Thank you so much, Britt. In California tonight, a suspected serial killer is in custody, wanted for at least six murders. Police say he was found while out hunting his next victim. The chief says he is sure they prevented another death. ABC's Mona Kosar Abdi has the latest. Tonight, police in Stockton, California, say they have taken a suspected serial killer off the streets that terrorized the community. We have the right person in custody. Police say they zeroed in on 43-year-old Wesley Brownlee through community tips, making the arrest early Saturday morning, as they say he was lurking around dark areas looking to kill again. Brownlee allegedly armed with a gun. He was on a mission to kill. He was out hunting. According to authorities, Brownlee is linked to the murders of five men in Stockton, one in Oakland. They also believe he shot a woman in April of 2021 who survived. This person was near perfect. You know, didn't make many mistakes. You know, you purposely stayed in the dark. Police say ballistics tests and surveillance video have linked the seven crime scenes, but that recovered gun is still being tested. Have you guys been able to link that gun to any of the murders that occurred in Stockton or in Oakland? That's part of the ongoing investigation. Uh, the ATF has been a great partner for us. They're handling all the ballistic evidence and we hope to hear more from them soon. The police chief says he believes the man in this video with a distinctive walk is Brownlee. And tonight, the mother of Paul Yaw, one of the victims, grateful a suspect is now in custody. To get this person off the street really means a lot. Relief throughout that community. Mona Kosar Abdi joins us now. Mona, any idea when charges could be filed? Lindsay, the San Joaquin County District Attorney says that initial charges will be filed tomorrow when the suspect is arraigned in court. Lindsay? All right, Mona, thank you. Now to the midterm elections. With about three weeks until Election Day, early voting is now underway in Georgia, where the Senate race there between Republican Herschel Walker and incumbent Senator Raphael Warnock could determine who controls Congress. As the two square off, Warnock is going after Walker, saying that he has trouble with the truth. And there's a new development tonight on the claim that Walker paid for a former girlfriend to have an abortion. ABC's Rachel Scott reports in from Georgia. Today, as early voting begins in Georgia, Democratic Senator Raphael Warnock showing up to cast his ballot. Yeah, that feels great. Feels great. Warnock turning up the heat on his Republican opponent, Herschel Walker, attacking his character at their one and only debate. My opponent has a problem with the truth. One thing I have not done, I've never pretended to be a police officer. <laughs> And, and, and I've, never, I've never threatened a shootout with the police. Walker responded by flashing what appeared to be a sheriff's badge. They're no, moving no, 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 I've not responded to that. And you know what's so funny? I am with, with many police officers. <laughs> the moderator then scolding Walker for bringing a prop on stage. He later acknowledged it's actually just an honorary badge from his hometown sheriff's department. If anything happened in this county, I have the right to work with the police and get the things done. Does that have arresting authority or it's an honorary badge? It is an honorary badge, but they can call me whenever they want me. But according to the National Sheriff's Association, an honorary badge is for the trophy case. Warnock says it's all part of a pattern of lies. Claim to be a college graduate, he's not. Claim to be a valedictorian of his class, he was not. Claim to have 800 employees in his business, he has eight. 
claim to have started a business that does not even exist. So I guess he expects the people of Georgia now to hallucinate and imagine that he is also a United States senator. He's clearly not ready. And then there's this. He threatened to kill his ex-wife, put a gun to her head. Walker does not deny that happened, but claims he doesn't remember, adding he was struggling with mental health issues at the time. Walker's strategy? Tying the senator to President Biden amid soaring inflation. This race ain't about me. It's about what Raphael Warnock and Joe Biden had done to you and your family. Tonight, he's going to try to sweet talk it that he's doing a good job. Today, I press the senator. Democrats have been in control of the White House, of Congress for the past two years. Inflation has soared. Why should Georgia voters give you another chance? We are still in the throes of a pandemic that dragged on for more than two years. So the people of Georgia have a clear choice about who's walking with them through these difficult times. Yes, voters have a clear and distinctively different choice. Rachel Scott joins us now from Atlanta. Rachel, there's also news today from Walker on the woman who claims that he paid for her abortion. What did Walker say about the check that she says she has as evidence of that payment? Yes, Lindsay, and you know this well from when you sat down exclusively with Herschel Walker. He has continued to deny these allegations, but today for the first time he admitted to giving that woman a $700 check. He claims that it was not for an abortion. He still would not say what the money was actually used for, what it was intended for. He initially denied even knowing who the woman was making these allegations, only later to acknowledge that is the mother of one of his children, Lindsay. Rachel Scott, our thanks to you as always. We have seen horrifying new images of a deadly fire inside Iran's most notorious prison. Two Americans are among the prisoners there. This is protests continue to rage across that country. Here's ABC's chief global affairs anchor, Martha Raditz. Tonight, Tehran's Evin prison still smoldering. New images showing charred heaps of metal from that massive inferno over the weekend that lit up the skies with sounds of explosions and gunfire. Iranian officials say at least eight prisoners, who they describe as robbery suspects, were killed and more than 60 suffering smoke inhalation. State media blaming the fires on thugs, who they say set prison clothing ablaze after a fight broke out in a sewing room. But tight restrictions on reporting make it nearly impossible to know what really happened. Tonight, word that two Iranian-American businessmen held in the prison are safe. The families of Siamek Namazi and Ahmad Shargi received word they have been moved to a secure area of the prison not affected by the blaze. The State Department says the men were wrongly convicted of spying. The U.S. has accused Iran of serious human rights abuses at the prison, concerns made more urgent after hundreds of Iranians have been jailed here since protests erupted a month ago. Sparked by the death of 22-year-old Masa Amini, who died in police custody after her arrest for violating the country's strict dress code. Those protests show no sign of slowing down. And in an act of defiance on the world stage, Iranian climber Elnaz Rakabi competing in Seoul without a hijab as required. Quite a bold move there. Martha Raddatz joins us now. Martha, what do we know about Rakabi tonight? Well, there are reports, Lindsay, that she is now on her way back to Iran with her team. There have been no official statements, but there are concerns about what will happen to her after she returns, whether or not she will face some sort of punishment. Lindsay? Martha Rad is for us. Thanks so much, Martha. Back here at home, a scary scene in Connecticut where a young boy was attacked by a black bear while playing near his grandparents' home. So how did his grandfather and neighbors fend off the bear until authorities arrived? Here's ABC's Trevor Ault. Tonight, that terrifying backyard bear encounter, a 10-year-old boy playing outside his grandparents' house in Connecticut when the 250-pound black bear started dragging him away. The bear came out of the woods, unexpectedly grabbed the poor 10-year-old, dragged him off toward the woods. The boy's grandfather, who reportedly uses a wheelchair, throwing this metal bar at its head. And a neighbor heard the screams and managed to scare the animal back, freeing the boy, but it wouldn't go away. In the area for now, the bear is reported to still be in the yard and aggressive at this time. 
State police and wildlife officials ultimately shooting and killing the bear as they say a booming bear population is leading to more dangerous encounters like these. A lot of folks are now carrying bear whistles or air horns, bear spray, things that can alert a bear to their presence. And that can help avoid some unexpected confrontations and conflicts. Lindsay, this child was rushed to the hospital with bite wounds on his thigh and foot and claw wounds on his back, but thankfully his injuries are not considered life-threatening. Lindsay? Our thanks to Trevor. Next tonight, to the big chill for millions of Americans tonight, at least 20 states are on alert for freezing fall temperatures. Parts of Michigan woke up to eight inches of snow this morning, and that cold is now heading east. Our chief meteorologist, Ginger Z, is tracking it all. Ginger, sounds like winter cold is beginning to make its way back into many of our lives. Is it ever? In northern Michigan, now over a foot, northern Wisconsin, more than 16 inches of snow. And yes, the rain that is falling right now is our last little gasp with the stormy skies that have been around of what feels more like a spring, I would say, because we are going deep into fall, if not winter, with these numbers. So, Lindsay, let's go ahead and look at those maps. That low pressure system that you see just northeast of the lower peninsula of Michigan, that is where that front is attached to, and it's going to rip in and pull down some of the cold polar air. It won't just stop in the, you know, Ohio River Valley, it's actually going to end up going as far south as the Gulf Coast. And that's why we see freeze watches down, including Mobile and Pes uh, Pensacola, up through West Virginia. And then the freeze warnings that include Nashville, Memphis, Paducah, Springfield, so many places by tomorrow morning. This is what it'll feel like. These are wind chills because that's what humans feel, right? So it feels like 32 for Memphis or 21 in Indianapolis, 24 in Chicago. Not as big of a deal if you're up in the Great Lakes. But watch Wednesday morning where we could see more than three dozen records, record lows, be broken all the way south into Mississippi, Alabama. Look at that. Feels like in the 30s uh, into the southeast, too. Now, we will get down to probably 40 here in New York. And New York, that will be the coldest air of the season, but certainly not breaking any records. It'll just feel like a real um, return to reality. Lindsay. Time for us to return to those hoods on our heads. <laughs> Ginger, thank you so much. And those falling temperatures, which will push more people back indoors and have officials on high alert tonight about a possible new COVID wave. And what's concerning doctors and health officials tonight is roughly only 5% of eligible Americans have received an updated booster. Joining us now for more is ABC News contributor and pediatrician at Stanford Children's Health, Dr. Alok Patel. Doctor, always so good to have you on the show. Uh, many people might feel burned out by the pandemic. We certainly get it, understand it. But why do you think that so few people have gotten that updated shot. You know, Lindsay, I think it's a lot of what you just said there is people are burned down. They're tired of this, but also the coverage is a little bit different and people have a different sense of urgency. But the fact remains that we still do not have a good prediction of what COVID may do this winter, including a potential surge or new variant. So it's important that we remind people that yes, the primary vaccines do an extremely good job at preventing severe illness and death, but these updated bivalent boosters are our best shot against BA5, which is now the dominant strain right now in the United States. Important to get before the holiday season when we all wanna gather around each other indoors. And if you are healthy without any underlying health concerns and have already had say two doses of Pfizer and a Pfizer booster, what factors should you consider when deciding when to get this fourth shot? Well, I think the important thing, first of all, for a lot of people is timing. Now, the bivalent booster is available for people above the age of five. If it's been at least two months since the last shot you had, whether that is a primary vaccine or a booster, or about three months since you, if you last had COVID-19, which is a lot of people, it seems a lot of people tested positive, Lindsay, in late summer or early fall. But another important factor, aside from your own individual health, is the people around you. Is are you doing your are you doing your part to protect not only your immediate family but your community as well? Are we in danger of another Omicron type winner with a new variant if enough Americans don't get this shot? The potential is definitely there. We are seeing a dire situation happening right now with numbers in Europe as well as in Southeast Asia with different variants. We have BQ11, which could potentially cause a new surge. There's XBB. There's other names right now. I don't need to rattle off for you. But the important thing is that some of these variants are off the BA5 lineage, 
which is off of the Omicron lineage. And we have enough data right now to suggest that the bivalent vaccine protects against these. So that is an important step forward. And we will welcome any data we see as the trials continue. And you mentioned the holidays. We know, of course, Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, they're all right around the corner. Is there a best time to get those shots and be the most protected or should people just go out and get it now? Simply put, before Halloween. Now, this is my favorite time of the year. I love all the holidays happening right now. Whether we're talking about influenza, the bivalent shot, or your primary series, which a lot of people still need to get, we need at least two weeks after each one of these vaccines to build up those antibodies. So if you're timing it around something like Thanksgiving, you want to get those shots as soon as you're eligible. Hopefully, it is in October. And I'm just curious, I've been doing a lot of traveling lately at places on airplanes, restaurants, airports, malls, for the, the vast majority of people are not wearing masks at all. What is your thought on that? Well, my thought is that this is contributing to what may potentially be a rise in COVID cases, but it's also worrisome because if you look at hospitals right now, we are seeing a surge of other viruses such as influenza and RSV. I will tell you from personal experience that children's hospitals are full. The ICUs are full, and it's not necessarily just because of COVID. So it is that behavior of people having a more relaxed attitude, gathering around each other, taking off their masks. We have to remember that these are life-saving measures. So simple things like wearing a mask, staying home when you're sick, telling others to stay home if they're sick, and washing your hands. Those are not behaviors that should stop with COVID-19. They should continue indefinitely for every single cold and flu season from here on. And when should people get their flu shots? Right now. <laughs> if you haven't already, right now, before the holiday season, in any given year, influenza will hospitalize thousands of Americans, taking the lives of some 30 to 60,000. And based on what we're seeing in that Southern Hemisphere, we are worried about a potentially bad flu season. So get that shot yesterday. All right, will do. Doctor, thank you so much. Appreciate your time. Thank you. When we come back, what happened moments before a plane crashed into a home with a woman and her toddler reportedly inside? He honed his music skills in church, but now he's creating something all his own. How Robert Glasper's unique blend of sounds and collaborations are revolutionizing the music industry. And many Republican candidates are condemning calls to, quote, defund the police. But does this campaign talking point really reflect the reality of police department budgets in our country? Our Chief Justice Correspondent Pierre Thomas investigates. Stay with us. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families Trump. here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. Here at the White House. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. We made it. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Bring them on. If only there was a place in the morning to start my day. With a smile, somewhere to help me get in the know. A place as spectacular as, well, me. Hmm, I think we might know a place, right, guys? Bring your friends. Oh, wait, there is. Good morning, America. GMA, 7A, every day. Boom. 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 Good morning, Michael. Good morning, Robin. Good morning, America. How are you? Boom. Now that's how you start your day, people. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? <laughs> Let's go. How are you? <laughs> I you. Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 12 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. As of today, in a big way, we have inaugurated ABCNews.com. A lot has changed in our world since Peter made that announcement. But what hasn't changed is the commitment to groundbreaking reporting and innovation at ABCNews.com. And here's to everything ahead. This is ABC News Live Prime. Thanks so much for streaming with us. Live reporting, breaking news, exclusives, award-winning, powerful, eye-opening. ABC News Live Prime with Lindsay Davis. Streaming weeknights. With so much at stake in our world right now, we wanted to thank you for your trust and for making ABC News America's number one news. And thank you for making ABC News Live America's number one streaming news. 
much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. America is being poisoned with fentanyl, and we don't even know it. Just heard my wife screaming. She told me they had just died. 50 to 100 times more potent than morphine. Keep breathing, come on. It's poison, it's pure poison. A few grains of salt worth of fentanyl will kill you. Just my agency has seized enough to kill the entire country. ABC News Live presents Poisoned, America's Fentanyl Crisis, the powerful series, streaming free on ABC News Live. Terrifying moment in a South Florida neighborhood when a plane crashed into a home. It landed in the rear of the home in Miramar, slamming into the roof. Our ABC affiliate in the area reports that a woman and her two-year-old were inside at the time, but fortunately they were not heard. According to airport personnel, a mechanic had been working on the small plane Monday and it departed on a test flight shortly before it crashed, killing the two people on board. The National Transportation Safety Board will investigate the cause of the crash. With concerns about crime becoming a major issue in critical midterm races now just three weeks until Election Day, many Republican candidates are returning to criticism of calls to, quote, defund the police. But in an ABC News investigation conducted with our own stations across the country, our chief justice correspondent Pierre Thomas reports on what's actually happening with police department budgets in recent years and whether the campaign rhetoric matches the reality. Here's Pierre Thomas. With less than 25 days left until the midterm elections, the rhetoric in some of the high-profile races is ramping up. Streets are exploding with drugs and violence, while liberals like Tim Ryan attack and defund our police. Defunding the police is way off the mark. We need more cops, not less. Among the top issues candidates hope will bring voters to the polls, crime, with the issue of defunding the police, often front and center. Violent crime is on the rise, and our law enforcement is under attack. A review of broadcast transcripts shows police funding and similar phrases being used thousands of times in midterm political ads and during candidate appearances. Those ads appear to be breaking through to voters. The issue of crime where I live has been dealt with well because um, our servants, our police, and our emergency services are doing their job well. They have not been defunded. I think crime is completely out of control all over this country. Absolutely. And we have to get a handle on it. This doesn't even look like the America I grew up in. It's ridiculous. Some conservatives are suggesting rising crime rates are the result of cutting police budgets. But our ABC-owned television stations analyzed budgets for more than 100 police agencies and found defunding never happened in most cities. I think that defunding the police has been, at least the terminology has been so shocking to so many people. Um, uh, because I don't think that they necessarily understand the nuances of it. In 83% of the budgets we reviewed, funding increased by at least 2% between 2019 and 2022. And defunding often means different things for different departments. I think that the majority of individuals should realize that defunding the police is not a literal term. There have been several places that have defunded the police, which really means a reallocation or redistribution of funds and resources. In some cities, funding was shifted to different areas of the police department or to social services, not reduced. But some candidates are hyper-focused on appearing tough on crime and supporting police officers. Across America, crime has exploded. Police officers killed in the line of duty. In Texas, Governor Greg Abbott is promising to protect law enforcement budgets if he's re-elected. I support our law enforcement by ensuring that they are fully funded. When we looked at the numbers across Texas, we found all but one of the departments saw budget increases over the last few years. Austin was one of the few cities that reallocated police funding following protests during the summer of 2020. In 2021, city leaders reduced the police budget by 30 percent. They plan to use that money for additional police oversight and community and mental health programs. But the following year, state legislators passed a law barring cities from cutting police budgets. Austin ended up increasing police funding by 50 percent this year. Our budget is frozen, our hiring is frozen, and the vacancies are starting to mount. Disputes over police budgets are also making headlines in local races. Los Angeles County Sheriff Alex Villanueva is running for re-election. 
Earlier this year, he held a press conference to explain that any cuts to his budget would put everyone. lives at risk. People literally are going to die on the streets for lack of us being able to intervene to stop crime or to solve a crime that has already happened. But while the sheriff's share of the county's overall budget has decreased, he's actually been getting more money every year. In fact, since 2019, the sheriff's department's budget has increased 8%. Uh, good morning, everyone. When our L.A. station KABC challenged the sheriff, he said it's still a direct defunding because the budget is not keeping up with costs. It's not politically popular to invest in public safety. County officials say the sheriff needs to be smarter about the billions of dollars he's receiving. This response from L.A. County's chief executive office. The board has not defunded the sheriff's department. The sheriff, not the Board of Supervisors, or the county's chief executive office, has the responsibility and the authority to decide how he uses his department's $3.6 billion budget. Making tough fiscal, personnel, and programmatic decisions are part of the job. Part of the reason why the defund the police narrative has stayed around is because police officers say it, and elected officials say it, and people believe and trust them. Rayshawn Ray studies law enforcement policy and research and says the connection between police funding and crime rates is based more on perception than data. There isn't a huge correlation necessarily between police spending and crime reduction. Roughly 40% of all homicides go uncleared, meaning unsolved every year. That's part of the reason why people feel unsafe is because they hear about these crimes and they don't hear oftentimes a lot about someone uh, being charged, arrested, or even convicted for those crimes. Regardless, on Election Day, voters are going to render a verdict. They sure will. Our thanks to Pierre Thomas for that. Still ahead here on Prime, the next time you need to return an online purchase, it might cost you. The company is now getting rid of free returns. The government mandate forcing global supergroup BTS out of the spotlight until 2025. And he's China's most prominent leader in generations, and his tenure is about to be extended. We take a look at Xi Jinping by the numbers. But first, our tweet of the day. Complex Magazine highlights the real-life woman who inspired Mama Coco has left us. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? Let's go. How are you? Can I hug you? Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 12 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families the here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. Here at the White House. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. We made it. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. America is being poisoned with fentanyl, and we don't even know it. Just heard my wife screaming. She told me they had just died. 50 to 100 times more potent than morphine. Keep breathing, come on. It's poison, it's pure poison. A few grains of salt worth of fentanyl will kill you. Just my agency has seized enough to kill the entire country. ABC News Live presents Poisoned, America's Fentanyl Crisis, the powerful series, streaming free on ABC News Live. Bring them on. If only there was a place in the morning to start my day. With a smile, somewhere to help me get in the know. A place as spectacular as, well, me. Hmm, I think we might know a place, right, guys? Bring your friends. Oh, wait, there is. Good morning, America. GMA, 7A, every day. Boom. 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 Good morning, Michael. Good morning, Robin. Good morning, America. How are you? Boom. Now that's Bring how you start your, your day, people. I'm ready for election night, I'm ready for debate night, I'm ready for it all. This midterms is really important. Hi, everyone. We're gonna run you ragged. What would George do? We're working on it, George. We're gonna make you proud. 
As of today, in a big way, we have inaugurated ABCnews.com. A lot has changed in our world since Peter made that announcement. But what hasn't changed is the commitment to groundbreaking reporting and innovation at ABCnews.com. And here's to everything ahead. Welcome back, everyone. He is China's most prominent leader since Mao Zedong, and his tenure is about to be extended. Here's Xi Jinping by the numbers. It was 2012 when she consolidated power and became China's paramount leader, the general secretary of the Chinese Communist Party and chairman of the Central Military Commission, who became president the next year. The 69-year-old oversees the largest population of any country in the world, with more than 1.4 billion residents. On Sunday, she delivered a 105-minute-long speech to nearly 2,300 delegates at the opening of the 20th National Congress at the Great Hall of People on Tiananmen Square. His remarks set the stage for Xi to award himself a third five-year term as general secretary. He called for more military expansion and has already doubled China's defense budget since taking power, which was estimated at $240 billion in 2021, second only to the United States. The GDP in China has also grown exponentially during his tenure, hitting $18 trillion in 2021. But China has faced some economic setbacks tied to his zero COVID policy that has led to repeated lockdowns. She's hardline positions on Taiwan and Hong Kong, his friendliness toward Russia and evidence of human rights abuses have all sent the American view of China plummeting with 82% now sharing an unfavorable view of China, according to Pew Research. And we still have lots to get to here on Prime tonight. President Biden is calling it a game changer for millions of Americans. How you can apply for student loan forgiveness right now. And it's a social network with ties to the Capitol attack. The celebrity who's now set to buy parlor. But first, a look at our top trending stories on ABCnews.com. With so much at stake in our world right now, we wanted to thank you for your trust, and for making ABC News America's number one news. And thank you for making ABC News Live America's number one streaming news. Now streaming on ABC News Live 2020. True crime, cinematic, real-life drama, stunning, the unthinkable. Follow the clues, the hunt, true crime 2020. Now streaming on ABC News Live. National parks are incredibly safe places, but crime will happen. My wife had fallen in really critical condition. At that time, I thought it was just a tragic accident. There's still a lot of questions we need to ask. There were small things that didn't totally add up. This is two lives for Harold that have died now. I was shocked. Something's not right. Admit it. These days, what you need to know seems to change just about every day. What is it that you really want to know, need to know? To help you not just get through your day, but to make the most of it. Feel smarter. Feel better. Feel happier. Well, how about a third hour of Good Morning America? GMA3, what you need to know. Now streaming on ABC News Live. It's all about you. I know what happened and I'm not guilty. Why the fascination with criminal trials? Figure out what's really out there. She revealed she had murdered his family. I know in my heart that he did this. It's the time of suspicion. The ending's really tough. You don't know whether truth is going to be difficult to find unless you try to find it. America's number one news, ABC News. Most watched, most trusted, and streaming live to you anytime, anywhere, and free. This is ABC News Live, America's number one streaming news, free to you 24-7. Watch America's number one news whenever you want it, wherever you are, anytime. ABC News Live, streaming live and free on all platforms.
Deadly aerial attacks from Russia continuing to rain down on Ukraine's capital city of Kiev. Officials there say the weapons were mostly kamikaze drones supplied by Iran. Iran has denied providing Russia with the weapons. This Ukrainian parliament member calling for a global response to Russia's assault. We're asking also for the uh, further sanctions uh, for, for this country that is actually you know, selling uh, drones to, um, to Russia. And Russia's military confirming a warplane has crashed into a resident area on the Sea of Azov. The U.S. and NATO kicking off nuclear training exercises in Europe. The long-planned annual nuclear drills will include dozens of aircraft, including U.S. B-52 long-range bombers. Russia holding its own nuclear exercises this month, which could include live missile tests. President Vladimir Putin continuing to stoke nuclear fears over U.S. and NATO support for Ukraine, calling a potential direct conflict a very dangerous move, which could lead to a global catastrophe. Bodies found in Oklahoma's Fork River have been identified as four men who went missing last week. The human remains recovered from the Deep Fork River at the Sharp Road Bridge have been positively identified as Mark Chastain, Billy Chastain, Mike Sparks, and Alex Stevens. Although the official cause and manner of death is still pending, each victim suffered gunshot wounds. All four bodies were dismembered before being placed in the river, and that is what caused difficulty in determining identity, and that's why it took so long. Authorities believe they were planning to commit a criminal act. They're also looking at a person of interest. President Biden says you can now file for relief for thousands of dollars of federal student loan debt. I'm announcing how millions, millions of people working in middle class folks can apply for get this relief, and it's simple, and it's now. It's easy, it's fast. At the end of my remarks, I'm going to officially launch this new app, new application site at studentaid.gov, studentaid.gov. Up to 20,000 will be forgiven for people with Pell Grants, up to 10,000 for other types of loans. Starting today, millions of Americans can buy hearing aids over the counter without a prescription. A shift in FDA policy now allows retailers like Walgreens, Walmart, and Best Buy to sell those devices. The new rule will also make the hearing aids more affordable. The earpieces cost on average between four and $5,000. Some retailers are going to be listing the devices as low as 200 bucks. Kanye West sets his sights on a social media platform. The rapper entered into a deal to take over Parler, the app that's grown in popularity among conservatives. Parler's parent company made an announcement today saying West has made, quoting now, a groundbreaking move into the free speech media space. West's latest venture comes after Twitter blocked him for a tweet Twitter called anti-Semitic. No details on the acquisition deal between West and Parler. A father and son fishing trip off the coast of New Jersey got a surprise visit from a humpback whale. Zach Piller and his dad were fishing for bass and tuna off the coast of Monmouth County. Yep, when the massive whale breached the surface and then crashed back into the water right next to them, the whale actually tapped their boat, but thankfully Zach and his dad were not hurt. The pillar said they had both woken up with a weird feeling they would see a whale. They had been taking videos and pictures of sharks and dolphins for hours before the humpback whale breached. Zach said he had his phone out because he was taking a picture of dad's catch of the day and his dad managed to hold on to it. Wow. Even after the whale bumped into them. That is quite a bump. Welcome back, everyone. Online shopping has become a normal part of life, but there could be a big change looming for anyone who loves to purchase items with a click. Our chief business correspondent, Rebecca Jarvis, explains. As the holiday shopping season ramps up, buyers beware. Some major retailers are adjusting their shipping return policies, making free returns a thing of the past. I just was kind of surprised. Online shopping soared during the pandemic, but so did returns. The National Retail Federation reporting $218 billion worth of online purchases were returned in 2021, more than double the year before. All signs point to the era of free returns probably coming to an end in the near future. They're costing retailers millions of dollars every year. 
And that's because shipping has gotten more expensive and labor has gotten more expensive as well. Business Insider reporting many shoppers do what's called bracketing, buying the same clothes in different sizes and colors, then returning what they no longer want and doesn't fit. H&M announcing on a recent earnings call it will test a fee to ship back returns in certain markets. When I saw that there was going to be a deduction from my refunds, um, it kind of made me reconsider if I would really be shopping online as often. Among other retailers currently charging shipping fees to return by mail, Zara charging $3.95 for any returns to a drop-off point, Abercrombie & Fitch a $7 shipping fee to return, J. Crew's prepaid label coming in at $7.50, and JCPenney charging a flat shipping rate of $8. I think eventually they'll just end up paying for it because consumers want to shop, and they want to make sure that they are returning the items that they don't want anymore. Experts say there are still ways to avoid those costs. Most retailers let shoppers return online purchases for free at brick and mortar stores. Also, see if the store will do free shipping for exchanges rather than returning and make those returns within the 30 day window you commonly see from retailers. Some very helpful tips from Rebecca Jarvis. A so-called cookie war is heating up. Smaller businesses are fighting back against bigger, more popular chains. But Crumble, the largest cooking company in the country, says their packaging recipes and a lot more are being copied. ABC's Kenneth Moten shows us this biting back and forth. Somebody's playing dirty. Cookies. The cookie wars heating up. Executives speaking out over a piping hot legal battle all over baked goods. Let's get ready to crumble! Billion dollar Utah based crumble cookies suing smaller competitors Dirty Dough and Crave. Crumble accusing the startups of trademark infringement, claiming they copy crumble's cookie designs, packaging, even logos. Both companies fiercely denying the claims. Our initial reaction to receiving this lawsuit was primarily just shock and frustration. The taste, the look, the feel of the cookie is as different as it's possible to get when you're talking about cookies. The not-so-sweet fight earlier this year going public. This is a cease and desist order. Uh, you're going to have to shut down the whole operation. From ads appearing to poke fun at the cookie giant to billboards. Cookies so good, we're being sued. Our colors are black and gold. Their colors are pink and black. Our logo is two overlapping cookies with a bite taken out of it. Their logo is a baker wearing a hat with a bite taken out of the hat. In August, a more serious allegation. Crumble claiming Dirty Dough was plain dirty and stole dozens of recipes, training videos, and trade secrets. It's a bad look for him. We're the first ones to stand up and say like, no, this isn't okay. Like you can't just sue people without merit. Um, so then they keep making up other claims like stolen documents. Lawsuits and all, this Virginia Crumble store is staying busy. Their fans as loyal as ever. Crumble or nothing. Crumble telling ABC News all brands have the right and responsibility to protect their intellectual property. The way the law looks at these things is, okay, two things may look alike, but we want to know if customers are confused. That's the ultimately question on the trademark trade dress side of things. That may not be the way the cookie crumbles are. Thanks to Kenneth for that. They are a global sensation, have broken records and catapulted K-pop to the forefront of entertainment. But now the band BTS is planning to put music on hold in order to serve in the military. Chris Connolly has this story. Millions of BTS fans around the world feeling anything but dynamite. The K-pop superstar Septet looking at a likely hiatus until 2025. Because the guys in the group must complete their mandatory South Korean military service. First up, Chin. At 29, the band's eldest member. He'll be called for duty at the end of the month. Military service is compulsory in South Korea. Men required to serve in the army for 18 months by the time they're 28. Chin able to defer thanks to a government bill that allows pop stars to defer until the age of 30. The band's record label saying BTS wants to respect the needs of the country, adding the time is now. After Chin, other members of the group plan to carry out their military service based on their own individual plans. 
BTS, the world's best-selling recording act for the last two years, shocked their legions of fans in June when they announced a break to focus on solo projects. On October 15th, they reunited for this sold-out free concert in Busan, South Korea. Their latest single, Yet to Come, promising even better days ahead. When the band came to GMA, they told us keeping a positive outlook is the key to their success. It's about finding, finding little joy in love and being curious about the little things. Now, fans will be eagerly awaiting their return, as by 2025, BTS hopes once again to be shining through the city with a little funk and soul. All right, thanks to Chris for that. Jazz is a musical tradition known for its soul, and for years, Robert Glasper has been transcending even that to create something all his own. That effort is evident in his latest album, Black Radio 3. The record shows off the four-time Grammy winner's genre-bending sound and stunning collaborations with well-known artists like Her, Common, India Re, and the late Mac Miller. Our Phil Lipoff sat down with a pianist to talk about revolutionizing a sound steeped in history in our latest Prime playlist. Tucked away on the west side of Manhattan sits the famed Blue Note Jazz Club, a small but storied space whispers of music in every corner, thanks to the decades of legendary performers taking the stage. On this night, the artist in residence represents more than just jazz, and that's by design. Jazz cannot be narrowed down to a rhythmic pattern. It's supposed to be a free music. If you ask any jazz musician or jazz police, that's what they say. Oh, it's about being free. It's about expression. Robert Glasper's music melds jazz with R&B and hip hop and a little bit of rock and roll. His ability to transcend and cross genres with ease has him collaborating with stars like Snoop Dogg and Jennifer Hudson. For Glasper, his musical journey began in Houston, an early introduction thanks to his mother, who was also a singer and piano player. I remember being in the back of clubs when I was three years old, and she's doing shows and coming back, waitresses are checking on me, you okay, you know? You know, and, and literally like being, just being around the music, being around the, the, the rehearsals. It didn't take long for music to seep into his soul. I started playing with one finger when I was 11. You know, literally playing Happy Birthday, that was the first song I ever I learned. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. The happy birthday. And then it just came fast after that. Just like, you know. And once I zoned in on it, I learned, I learned fast. So I think when I was about 15, I was like, I really want to do this. Like so many other great musicians, church is where he began to work on his craft and learned a key component of jazz, improvisation. You're a composer, you're scoring the situation, like you score a movie, like you do music for a movie, and you're paying attention to what's happening in the room, and you're putting music to it. After falling in love with jazz at the High School for the Performing and Visual Arts in Houston, Glasper moved to New York City in 1997 and began to play with The Roots. It was the first time I really played hip hop live because that wasn't a thing, really. After building credibility and a loyal fan base as a serious jazz pianist on his early albums, 2012 was a year of seismic change for his music, with the groundbreaking album Black Radio and the breakout hit Afro Blue featuring Erica Badu. Rich as the night, Afro Blue. And for me, listening to it, you understand right off the bat with liftoff and mic check, yeah. that you're setting people up. Yeah. This is gonna be something new. I'm yeah. about to give you an experience that you're gonna have to, you know, the first thing you hear is your, your friend saying, all you need is your ears and your soul. But my idea was, you know, I, I just wanted to create a big house of black music and go room to room. You know, that's what I, that's what I love to say. It's like, hey, I got the keys. I'm gonna go room to room. That's specifically my story, you know what I mean? Those are lanes that I lived in and I played in the mat with the masters of, all those lanes, the R&B masters, I play with the jazz masters, and I play with the hip hop masters. A clear reason, he says, for the title Black Radio, but there is hidden meaning as well. The other meaning was the, you know, the, the, the thing in the airplane called the black box, or the people called the black radio, 
And that's the thing where the, when the airplane crashes, it's the only thing that survives the crash. So it can tell you what happened. It gives you other details, but it, it survives the fire. You know what I mean? And, you know, good music, honest music uh, always survives. Black Radio was a game changer, winning that year's Grammy for Best R&B Album, featuring collaborations with artists across hip hop and R&B, including Lupe Fiasco and Layla Hathaway. The last track, a cover of the grunge classic Nirvana's Smells Like Teen Spirit. I love that song. That's a song that even if you're not a rock fan, you love the song. Like everyone loved that song. That's that, yeah, yeah. And just the, the vibe of it and yeah. Kirk Wayne's voice and it's just, just a dope song. Black Radio 2, just a year later, Glasper took collaboration to the next level. Macy Gray, Faith Evans, Jennifer Hudson, Jill Scott, Common, Q-Tip. I mean, the list goes on and on. Is it people are coming to you after Black Radio? I can reach out easier, and, and there are people who reach out to me that I was, that I'm fans of. The album, also a Grammy winner, including the song Let It Ride, featuring an old friend. You knew Nora. <laughs> and jazz, with the, me and Nora went to jazz camp together. You and Nora Jones went to jazz camp. <laughs> yep, went to jazz camp in uh, 11th grade. In 2015, appearing with Kendrick Lamar, playing on his To Pimp a Butterfly album, including On These Walls. Receiving an Emmy for the song Letter to the Free with Commons. America's moment to come to Jesus. Written for the Ava DuVernay documentary, 13th. In February 2022, Black Radio 3 dropped, featuring the song Black Superhero. Every block, every hood, every city, every ghetto. The refrain is every block, every hood, every city, every ghetto. He's a black superhero. Yeah. Um, and then at the end, you talk about black women specifically, yeah. but how everything comes from yeah. black women, which is so beautiful. When I did Black Radio, the whole premise was you know, most people um, have the gift of doing one genre that's the genre they do and black music is so colorful and and I, i've been blessed with a gift that i can represent a few of those colors i just wanted to see what i could do with black music and mixing it together and 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 just uh you know realizing that these new colors that are being made these new sounds that are being made can inspire people and, and just keep it going you know it's all just about inspiring the next generation inspiring people even as he continues to receive pushback from the traditionalists in the jazz world for his cross-genre work. Well, they say, that's not jazz. What are you doing? You got to come back to playing jazz. A lot of them tried to, like, shove me to the side, you know, and kind of, uh, you know, exclude me from the community, the jazz community. A community he loves and wants to expand. For Glasper, it's about studying the jazz traditions while having the freedom to explore the creative possibilities in the music. Is there something coming next is there something you have not discovered yet absolutely there's i have a lot of things i want to do that i haven't do, that i haven't done yet and I, I feel like hasn't really been put out like that the way i'm going to do it yet we will be all ears our thanks to phil lipoff for bringing us that and before we go tonight the image of the day and it's a positive one what you're looking at is foreign tourists in a famous neighborhood in tokyo why that's noteworthy is because japan even during the olympics has been closed to tourists until recently and that is our show for this hour be sure to stay tuned to abc's news live for more context and analysis of the day's top stories thanks so much for streaming with us Hour, we're staying on top of a few things. The request from Steve Bannon's attorneys as a judge decides on his sentence for contempt of Congress. And what public health officials say is now leading to the decline in the number of monkeypox cases in the U.S. and the precautions that should still be taken. America's number one news, ABC News. Most watched, most trusted and streaming live to you anytime, anywhere, and free. This is ABC News Live, America's number one streaming news, free to you 24-7. Watch America's number one news whenever you want it, wherever you are, anytime. ABC News Live, streaming live and free on all platforms. 
ready for election night. I'm ready for debate night. I'm ready for it all. This midterms is really important. Hi, everyone. We're going to run you ragged. What would George do? You're working on it, George. We're going to make you proud. With so much at stake in our world right now, we wanted to thank you for your trust and for making ABC News America's number one news. And thank you for making ABC News Live America's number one streaming news. He thought he was God. He's now one of the most vilified men in the world. He is the everyman. Zelensky is the Tom Hanks of Ukraine. The fact that a little nice Jewish boy is 5'7 is showing up this KGB agent in the Kremlin. What do you say to Americans who see Russia and you not only as a rival, but an unfriendly adversary? Two men at war. Which Vladimir will take over? The world is not going to be the same. Amber Rose Isaac was the love of my life. She went into the hospital, and then I just see Shimani as... She was as good as dead as soon as she walked into that hospital. Black women are four times more likely to die than their white counterparts with the same symptoms. I can't let Amber be another statistic. We need to make sure that this doesn't happen to anyone else. This fight is not over. We're doing this together, man. Lindsay Davis, thanks so much for streaming with us. We're monitoring several developments here at ABC News at this hour. The Justice Department is asking a federal judge to sentence Steve Bannon, advisor to former President Donald Trump, to six months in prison and make him pay a $200,000 fine for his conviction on two counts of criminal contempt of Congress, according to a new court filing. The DOJ accused Bannon of, quote, a bad faith strategy of defiance and contempt. Bannon is set to be sentenced on Friday at a D.C. courthouse. His defense team has said they plan on appealing the case. Monkeypox cases are continuing to decline in the United States as the outbreak keeps showing signs of receding. Surveys have shown that high-risk groups listen to public health advice and made changes such as reducing the number of sexual partners and anonymous sexual encounters in addition to getting vaccinated. However, experts say it's still important for those who are at high risk to keep taking those precautions. The TSA screened a record two and a half million people on Sunday alone. That is the most since February 14th of 2020, which, if you recall, was right before the pandemic hit. Kamikaze drones attacking a country's capital city. The images look and sound like scenes out of a movie, but that is the reality in Ukraine tonight as Russia's new reign of terror ramps up on targets far from the battlefield. Britt Klenet reports tonight from Kyiv, which was hit today by a series of drone attacks. Tonight, Russia's deadly campaign of terror. Kamikaze drones raining down on Kyiv. The capital coming under attack during the morning rush for the second time in a week. Ukraine claiming Russia launched at least 43 Iranian-made drones packed with explosives across the country, saying it shot down all but six. These videos of the strikes circulating online. Watch as police officers with assault rifles desperately try to shoot a drone out of the sky. You can hear the terrifying buzz of the drone in this body camera video, then the massive explosion. Chaos on the streets, reporters and police seeking cover. <laughs> Sheltering together, this woman asking for water. Residents running for their lives as explosions and gunfire are heard nearby. Firefighters combing through the aftermath, searching for survivors. Tragically, at least four people killed, including a pregnant woman and her husband. There's a strong sense of urgency here as emergency workers are frantically searching through the debris of that building. Smell is acrid of fire smoke, and you can see it rising out of that apartment building, which has been obliterated in this attack. President Zelensky tonight reiterating his plea for more sophisticated air defense systems, saying Russia has no chance on the battlefield, so it's trying to cover up its military defeats with terror. A sentiment echoed by the Pentagon. It says Moscow is deliberately striking civilian infrastructure and non-military targets. Iran denies supplying Russia with drones, but the US saying the proof is extensive and violates a UN resolution. 
Russia deepening an alliance with Iran uh, is something the whole world uh, should, especially those in the region uh, and across the world, frankly, should be seen as a f profound threat. And in Russia, near the Ukraine border tonight, a military fighter jet crashing into a residential area during a training exercise, sparking a massive fire that engulfed an apartment building. Experts say these two white flashes seen in video circulating online show the pilot ejecting from the plane. A bystander seen talking to the pilot moments later. The death toll rising, at least six people killed, several more missing. Russian authorities blaming engine failure for the crash. Our thanks to Brick Clinton. Tonight, there are horrifying new images of a deadly new fire inside Iran's most notorious prison. Two Americans are among the prisoners inside. Meanwhile, protests continue to spread across the country. Here's ABC's chief global affairs anchor, Martha Raditz. Tonight, Tehran's Evin prison still smoldering. New images showing charred heaps of metal from that massive inferno over the weekend that lit up the skies with sounds of explosions and gunfire. Iranian officials say at least eight prisoners who they describe as robbery suspects were killed and more than 60 suffering smoke inhalation. State media blaming the fires on thugs who they say set prison clothing ablaze after a fight broke out in a sewing room. But tight restrictions on reporting make it nearly impossible to know what really happened. Tonight, word that two Iranian-American businessmen held in the prison are safe. The families of Siamek Namazi and Ahmad Shargi received word they have been moved to a secure area of the prison not affected by the blaze. The State Department says the men were wrongly convicted of spying. The U.S. has accused Iran of serious human rights abuses at the prison, concerns made more urgent after hundreds of Iranians have been jailed here since protests erupted a month ago. Sparked by the death of 22-year-old Masa Amini, who died in police custody after her arrest for violating the country's strict dress code. Those protests show no sign of slowing down. And in an act of defiance on the world stage, Iranian climber Elnaz Rakabi competing in Seoul without a hijab as required. Quite a bold move there. Our thanks to Martha. Now to the midterm elections. Just three weeks until Election Day. Early voting is now underway in Georgia, where the Senate race between Republican Herschel Walker and incumbent Senator Raphael Warnock could just determine who controls Congress. As the two square off, Warnock is going after Walker, saying that he has trouble with the truth. And there's a new development tonight on the claim that Walker paid for a former girlfriend to have an abortion. ABC's Rachel Scott reports from Georgia. Today, as early voting begins in Georgia, Democratic Senator Raphael Warnock showing up to cast his ballot. Yeah, that feels great. Feels great. Warnock turning up the heat on his Republican opponent, Herschel Walker, attacking his character at their one and only debate. My opponent has a problem with the truth. One thing I have not done, I've never pretended to be a police officer. <laughs> And, and, and I've, never, I've never threatened a shootout with the police. Walker responded by flashing what appeared to be a sheriff's badge. No, 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 on, no. I'm not respond to that. And you know what's so funny? I am work with many police officers. <laughs> the moderator then scolding Walker for bringing a prop on stage. He later acknowledged it's actually just an honorary badge from his hometown sheriff's department. If anything happened in this county, I have the right to work with the police and getting things done. Does that have arresting authority or it's an honorary badge? It is an honorary badge, but they can call me whenever they want me. But according to the National Sheriff's Association, an honorary badge is for the trophy case. Warnock says it's all part of a pattern of lies. Claim to be a college graduate, he's not. Claim to be a valedictorian of his class, he was not. Claim to have 800 employees in his business, he has eight. Claim to have started a business that does not even exist. So I guess he expects the people of Georgia now to hallucinate and imagine that he is also a United States senator. He's clearly not ready. And then there's this. He threatened to kill his ex-wife, put a gun to her head. Walker does not deny that happened, but claims he doesn't remember, adding he was struggling with mental health issues at the time. Walker's strategy? tying the senator to President Biden amid soaring inflation. This race ain't about me. It's about what Raphael Warnock and Joe Biden had done to you 
and your family. Tonight, he's going to try to sweet talk you that he's doing a good job. Today, I press the senator. Democrats have been in control of the White House of Congress for the past two years. Inflation has soared. Why should Georgia voters give you another chance? We are still in the throes of a pandemic that dragged on for more than two years. So the people of Georgia have a clear choice about who's walking with them through these difficult times. Our thanks to Rachel Scott for that. In California tonight, a suspected serial killer is now in custody, wanted for at least six murders. Police say he was found while out hunting for his next victim. The chief says he is sure they present, prevented another death. ABC's Mola Kosar Abdi has the latest. Tonight, police in Stockton, California, say they have taken a suspected serial killer off the streets that terrorized the community. We have the right person in custody. Police say they zeroed in on 43-year-old Wesley Brownlee through community tips, making the arrest early Saturday morning as they say he was lurking around dark areas looking to kill again. Brownlee allegedly armed with a gun. He was on a mission to kill. He was out hunting. According to authorities, Brownlee is linked to the murders of five men in Stockton, one in Oakland. They also believe he shot a woman in April of 2021 who survived. This person was near perfect, you know, didn't make many mistakes, you know, you purposely stayed in the dark. Police say ballistics tests and surveillance video have linked the seven crime scenes, but that recovered gun is still being tested. Have you guys been able to link that gun to any of the murders that occurred in Stockton or in Oakland? That's part of the ongoing investigation. Uh, the ATF has been a great partner for us. They're handling all the ballistic evidence, and we hope to hear more from them soon. The police chief says he believes the man in this video with the distinctive walk is Brownlee. And tonight, the mother of Paul Yaw, one of the victims, grateful a suspect is now in custody. To get this person off the street really means a lot. Such a relief to that community. Our thanks to Mona. With concerns about crime becoming a major issue in critical midterm races, many Republican candidates are returning to criticism of calls to, quote, defund the police. But in an ABC News investigation conducted with our own stations across the country, our chief justice correspondent Pierre Thomas reports on what's actually happened with police department budgets in recent years and whether the campaign rhetoric matches the reality. Here's Pierre Thomas. With less than 25 days left until the midterm elections, the rhetoric in some of the high-profile races is ramping up. Streets are exploding with drugs and violence, while liberals like Tim Ryan attack and defund our police. Defunding the police is way off the mark. We need more cops, not less. Among the top issues candidates hope will bring voters to the polls, crime, with the issue of defunding the police often front and center. Violent crime is on the rise, and our law enforcement is under attack. A review of broadcast transcripts shows police funding and similar phrases being used thousands of times in midterm political ads and during candidate appearances. Those ads appear to be breaking through to voters. The issue of crime where I live has been dealt with well because um, our servants, our police, and our emergency services are doing their job well. They have not been defunded. I think crime is completely out of control all over this country. Absolutely. And we have to get a handle on it. This doesn't even look like the America I grew up in. It's ridiculous. Some conservatives are suggesting rising crime rates are the result of cutting police budgets. But our ABC-owned television stations analyzed budgets for more than 100 police agencies and found defunding never happened in most cities. I think that defunding the police has been, at least the terminology, has been so shocking to so many people um, uh, because I don't think that they necessarily understand the nuances of it. In 83% of the budgets we reviewed, funding increased by at least 2% between 2019 and 2022. And defunding often means different things for different departments. I think that the majority of individuals should realize that defunding the police is not a literal term. There have been several places that have defunded the police, 
which really means a reallocation or redistribution of funds and resources. In some cities, funding was shifted to different areas of the police department or to social services, not reduced. But some candidates are hyper-focused on appearing tough on crime and supporting police officers. Across America, crime has exploded. Police officers killed in the line of duty. In Texas, Governor Greg Abbott is promising to protect law enforcement budgets if he's re-elected. I support our law enforcement by ensuring that they are fully funded. When we looked at the numbers across Texas, we found all but one of the departments saw budget increases over the last few years. Austin was one of the few cities that reallocated police funding following protests during the summer of 2020. In 2021, city leaders reduced the police budget by 30 percent. They plan to use that money for additional police oversight and community and mental health programs. But the following year, state legislators passed a law barring cities from cutting police budgets. Austin ended up increasing police funding by 50 percent this year. Our budget is frozen, our hiring is frozen, and the vacancies are starting to mount. Disputes over police budgets are also making headlines in local races. Los Angeles County Sheriff Alex Villanueva is running for re-election. Earlier this year, he held a press conference to explain that any cuts to his budget morning, would put everyone. lives at risk. People literally are going to die on the streets for lack of us being able to intervene to stop crime or to solve a crime that has already happened. But while the sheriff's share of the county's overall budget has decreased, he's actually been getting more money every year. In fact, since 2019, the sheriff's department's budget has increased 8%. Uh, good morning, everyone. When our L.A. station KABC challenged the sheriff, he said it's still a direct defunding because the budget is not keeping up with costs. It's not politically popular to invest in public safety. County officials say the sheriff needs to be smarter about the billions of dollars he's receiving. This response from L.A. County's chief executive office. The board has not defunded the sheriff's department. The sheriff, not the Board of Supervisors, or the county's chief executive office, has the responsibility and the authority to decide how he uses his department's $3.6 billion budget. Making tough fiscal, personnel, and programmatic decisions are part of the job. Part of the reason why the defund the police narrative has stayed around is because police officers say it, and elected officials say it, and people believe and trust them. Rayshawn Ray studies law enforcement policy and research and says the connection between police funding and crime rates is based more on perception than data. There isn't a huge correlation necessarily between police spending and crime reduction. Roughly 40 percent of all homicides go uncleared, meaning unsolved every year. That's part of the reason why people feel unsafe is because they hear about these crimes and they don't hear oftentimes a lot about someone uh, being charged, arrested, or even convicted for those crimes. Regardless, on Election Day, voters are going to render a verdict. Our thanks to Pierre and still to come, Australians forced to put the contents of their homes and treasured memories on the side of the road after a major flooding. Now more rain could be on the way. And it's called recess therapy. How a YouTuber is lifting the spirits of millions with a series of wholesome playground sit downs. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. Here at the White House. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. We made it. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Bring them on. If only there was a place in the morning to start my day. With a smile, somewhere to help me get in the know. A place as spectacular as, well, me. Hmm, I think we might know a place, right, guys? Bring your friends. Oh, wait, there is. Good morning, America. GMA, 7A, every day. Boom. 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 Good morning, Michael. Good morning, Robin. Good morning, America. How are you? Boom. Now that's how you start your day, people. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? 
Let's go. How are you? Can I hug you? Yeah. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 12 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. As of today, in a big way, we have inaugurated ABCNews.com. A lot has changed in our world since Peter made that announcement. But what hasn't changed is the commitment to groundbreaking reporting and innovation at ABCNews.com. And here's to everything ahead. This is ABC News Live Prime. Thanks so much for streaming with us. Live reporting, breaking news, exclusives, award-winning, powerful, eye-opening. ABC News Live Prime with Lindsay Davis. Streaming weeknights. Welcome back. We're tracking several headlines around the world. Nearly 100 migrants were discovered naked at the Greek-Turkish border, an incident being called a sad and inhumane event. Greek officials said that migrants' accounts suggested that they were taken to Greece by the Turkish military police, an allegation Turkey denies, and it called on Greece to stop the, quote, manipulation and dishonesty. Tensions between the two countries have escalated recently over migrant issues, with Turkey accusing Greece of pushbacks, which Athens denies. Thousands of Australians returned to homes and businesses to assess flood damage even, even as evacuation warnings remained in inland regions of the southeast with authorities warning of more rain ahead which could trigger renewed flooding. The Weather Bureau has forecast another wild weather system that could bring rains up to two inches across some regions already hit hard by floods. Marigold flower growers expect good sales despite high supply costs as Day of the Dead celebrations approach in Mexico. Marigolds are known as the flower of the dead as their scent is believed to attract the souls of the dead and bring them back to the land of the living. And there is nothing like some wholesome content to lift our spirits, and that's the exact focus of Recess Therapy, a YouTube show that features not-so-in-depth interviews with kids. Our Ashan Singh introduces us to the comedian behind the sweet sit-downs that are putting smiles on faces around the world. Where do you think money comes from? But I also love... Look at this, then. I can't imagine a more beautiful thing. It's cold. Children are honest. Are you kidding? No. Ah, and they don't always good. hold back. Did you hear the joke about the roof? No, I've never heard the joke about the roof. Never mind, it's over your head. Oh! Welcome to Recess Therapy, the hit online show hosted by actor and comedian Julian Shapiro Barnum, where he asks little kids big questions. When did it become recess therapy and why therapy? The idea was even someone as old as me can still learn a great deal and listen to someone that young. Initially, I would bring kids subjects like happiness, anger, climate change, things that I was like, ooh, how, how do I navigate this as an adult in the world? How, how do I grapple with these things? Let me see if I can get any advice from kids. The series, released through the company Doing Things Media, has been a smash hit racking up over 12 million views on YouTube since it debuted in April of last year. With some of Julian's segments going mega viral from kids like Dylan. Because I really like Komodo dragons. If you could talk to Komodo dragons, what do you think you'd say to them? I would just say I love you. And? I love you, you're so nice. The six-year-old generating a cult following that had everyone appreciating Komodo dragons. The second time we sat down, I was like, what are you excited about? And he was like, I like drinking blood. <laughs> Dylan, do you drink blood? Yeah, I drink it sometimes. <laughs> Stay away from me. Or seven-year-old Tariq, who really loves corn. I really like corn. The clip now taking on a life of its own, heralding the summer of Corn I Kid, really like spawning musical what do you parodies. Like about corn? Even a Chipotle ad. Mild? No. Sour cream? No. Any corn? It's corn! We met up with Julian as he headed to Prospect Park in Brooklyn to film an episode. He was actually raised not too far from here. This is where you grew up? This is my office. I grew up coming to these parks, to these playgrounds, and coincidentally, they've become the set for where I film recess therapy, which is really cool, because I like feel very connected to the space. That ability to connect with everyone, anywhere, helping propel recess therapy beyond Brooklyn. This summer, the hype got so big, 
Julian launched Recess Therapy's first national tour. What's up, folks? Today we have a very special Recess Therapy episode because I am in Toronto, Canada, currently in Austin, Texas. We're in Los Angeles, California right now. Using the opportunity to try out new styles and formats. This is the first time there's been music in Recess Therapy. La la la! But it's not all about being silly. These kids have a lot to teach us on topics like our planet. You're bigger, so you're worse for the environment. I'm small. Love? Is there anything that you love that's not a human? Bacon. <laughs> yeah, do you love bacon more than your mom? I can't choose. And even our time left on Earth. You got a long, long and amazing life ahead of you. I know, longer than yours. Really? How much longer do you think I have? 20 weeks. What's the secret? Because it feels like so many people our age and older have a really hard time talking to kids. Yeah, be interested in what they're interested in. Like, mm. follow their excitement. I find a lot of kids don't get a space to really work through their ideas. Back at Prospect Park, Julian is about to bring recess therapy to life. When you go out there today, yeah. tell me a little bit about the game plan. What are you gonna ask about? Yeah, so we're actually gonna be finishing an episode that I started last week about icky feelings. So I'm talking to kids about being embarrassed and getting grossed out. How do you feel when there's a really yucky thing near you? I, 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 I just walk away, that's it. All right, so you're gonna walk away? Yeah. Let me see. So here's some worms. I thought you were gonna walk away. Is it embarrassing that you're doing this interview right now? Kinda. What do you want to say to people who feel confused about why they get embarrassed? Um, well, it's normal they get embarrassed. Yeah, that's it. And while everyone seems to be wondering how Julian is allowed to talk to these kids on camera, the savvy host has a waiver for that. Did you ever get surprised by the kids' answers and do you still get surprised? I have never expected what I, they have said. It is always insane every time. I did an interview like right there uh, like a month ago. Have you seen it, the one where the little girl was talking about like meditating and like she's I like, put I, your hands yeah, on the yeah, earth? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want you right now just to put your hands on the ground and just close your eyes. It's like you connected to the earth. It's like you connected to Mother Nature. The idea is simple enough. Asking kids about life and the world around them. But recess therapy is different. Julian's secret sauce, prescribing childhood curiosity to cure the anxiety of adulthood. And it seems to be working. I think it is really important and really powerful and really necessary to give children a voice and to hear what they have to say. Um, especially because so often their responses are laced with such positivity. Cool! I'm gonna have to use that joke about, you know, have you heard the one about the roof? Oh, forget it, it's over your head. You don't like that, Flav? I, I thought that was good. All right, our thanks to Ashin for that. Still to come after her breast cancer diagnosis, one woman says she's received a new calling. How she changed her life to help others battling the disease. After an extraordinary news-making year, and now with the historic midterms inching closer, thank you for making ABC's This Week America's number one news and politics show on Sunday mornings. Ready for election night, I'm ready for debate night, I'm ready for it all. This midterms is really important. Hi everyone. We're gonna run you ragged. What would George do? You're working on it, George, we're gonna make you proud. This is ABC News Live Prime. Thanks so much for streaming with us. Live reporting, breaking news, exclusives, award-winning, powerful, eye-opening. ABC News Live Prime with Lindsay Davis. Streaming weeknights. Ready for a little GMA-ish promo? Okay, here we go. GMA 7A every day with Robin, George, and Michael. That's how you start the day. Boom! America's number one news, ABC News. Most watched, 
most trusted, and streaming live to you anytime, anywhere, and free. This is ABC News Live, America's number one streaming news, free to you 24-7. Watch America's number one news whenever you want it, wherever you are, anytime. ABC News Live, streaming live and free on all platforms. Finally tonight, October is of course Breast Cancer Awareness Month and we want to introduce you to one woman whose diagnosis led to a dramatic change, not just to her outlook, but also her occupation. For 23 years, Darlene Alvarez worked in retail management. Then at 43, after finding a lump, she had her first mammogram. I had not gotten a mammogram in my whole life. Later that day, she underwent more tests and found out she had breast cancer. Within a month and a half, I had my port inserted and I had my first round of chemotherapy. After that was done, I had a mastectomy to have my breast removed. And then after that, I had 36 rounds of radiation. That time as a cancer patient wasn't just life changing, it caused her to change her career, hanging up retail for good, believing there was value in her empathy and experience. At 45, she started training to become a nurse. Knock, knock. Here I am. Going on 10 years of being cancer free, Darlene now works as a nurse on the oncology floor at Morton Plant Hospital in Clearwater, Florida. How are you feeling today? And on her work badge, a photo of herself from when she was undergoing treatment. I carry this with me so that patients going through cancer um, can see that I understand where they're coming from. Similar stories were on parade this weekend across the country as thousands took part in making strides against breast cancer walks to raise awareness and money for breast cancer research. Back in Florida, Darlene credits that mammogram with saving her life, and she hopes this message for women just might save theirs. Please go get your mammogram. It is not painful, it's quick, and one screening can save your life. Some great advice there, and that is our show for tonight. Be sure to stay tuned to ABC News Live for more context and analysis of the day's top stories. I'm Lindsay Davis. Thank you so much for streaming with us. Have a great night. America's number one news.